would like to welcome you back to the side event on South-South Cooperation through International Volunteering. This is organized jointly by UNB with the Beijing Volunteer Service Federation and China Volunteer Service Federation. And this is much more than a side event. This is when we connect back to the key theme of this conference on revitalizing partnerships. So what does it mean, revitalizing partnerships? When I look back to the year 2000, I was myself a UN volunteer working in a least developed country, working with the UN country team, helping to nationalize and monitor the MDGs. The MDGs, the goals for developing countries. The SDGs are no longer the goals just for the developing countries. These are universal goals that apply equally to all countries. SDG 10 is to reduce inequality within and among countries. And it says, among others, and I quote, to ensure enhanced representation and voice for developing countries in decision making, in global international, economic and financial institutions in order to deliver more effective, credible, accountable and legitimate institutions. It is in this context as well as SDG 17 of course that we see this session on revitalizing partnerships and South-South cooperation. UNV has been very active revitalizing partnerships and it's been clearly demonstrated in the sessions that we've had uh, in the last two days or in fact this week. In the last two years UNV developed with all of you a number of innovative projects with countries like Burundi, China, Colombia, Cote d'Ivoire, Gabon, Guatemala, Mali, Uganda, Uzbekistan and Russia. Projects that support youth, communities and volunteer infrastructure. Through these projects, UNV is providing support services to the governments and aimed at regional and global collaboration. We feel strongly that volunteering and South-South cooperation share the same principle. These are the principles of solidarity, respect for national and community ownership, mutual benefit, respect for equality. Volunteerism is indeed the important vehicle for South-South cooperation. And it's not only because 82% of UN volunteers come from the South come from developing countries. It is because it enables people to people partnerships and collaboration. And this was very clear to me when I have recently had the honor to, to visit uh, CVF, EVF in China and to discuss uh, our ongoing partnership. It is people to people collaboration in support of South-South cooperation. So our session today our side event, builds on the International Volunteer Service Exchange Conference, which we co-hosted with the Beijing Volunteer Service Federation last year in Beijing. And the conference essentially attempted to tackle this question. What do South-South and new global realities mean for international volunteering? For example, reciprocity, multi-directionality, South to South or South to North, skill and experience transfer. Joint humanitarian responses. And the emergence of national and regional volunteer infrastructures that become international and global. Let me share with you what I heard in the course of this week, in the IFCO conference and in the forum. Volunteer infrastructures and platforms are effective in empowering and mobilizing citizens to achieve national development priorities and SDGs. Then there comes the time when they reach the maturity and strength and accumulate experiences and skills and numbers to
to take them to the regional and global level. India has about 100 million volunteers, considering formal and informal volunteers. China has 100 million volunteers. These are great numbers that make it the international force for development for South-South cooperation. UND would like to be your partner of choice to provide that international connection and global platform you have spoken about. And this will be an unstoppable alliance to achieve the SDGs. We are honored to have in this session three countries as our speakers, China, Sierra Leone, and Thailand, who will share their experiences and present ideas in volunteering in South-South. And we will encourage many, many more of you present here to share your ideas, experiences, and views in the discussions that will follow. But first of all, I would like to invite Richard to give his opening remarks. Thank you. I don't know if you've ever seen the film Terminator where, you know, this is a film with Arnold Schwarzenegger and he keeps getting killed and then he keeps coming back. And every time that he comes back, he says, I'm back. <laughs> so this is me saying, I'm back. <laughs> it's a great pleasure to welcome you all to this side event on South-South Cooperation through international volunteering. UNV is pleased to organize this event with the Chinese China Volunteer Services Federation and the Beijing Volunteer Services Federation. CVSF and BVSF are UNV's long-standing partners and it was with their strong support exactly one year ago that we successfully held a conference in Beijing on international middle-income country volunteering. Thank you BVF and CVF for your vision and dedication and for your partnership. And thank you all for your attendance at this event. We are now uh, in overtime. We have played the main match and we're now sort of uh, having to, to do a little bit of extra. However, this is a very critical discussion and with your skills and knowledge, the experience that you've had around the globe, the experience that you've had in national volunteering, there is an awful lot of knowledge in the room and understanding and we can continue and deepen the conversation that was started in Beijing. The global development landscape is rapidly changing with tradi traditional actors evolving and new actors stepping up. In this dynam dynamic environment, I strongly believe that there are huge opportunities for volunteering. One of these is the opportunity for volunteering through South-South cooperation to become a driving force behind sustainable development. <coughs> and now is the right time to discuss it. First, both South-South cooperation and volunteerism are recognized as important for achieving sustainable development. South-South cooperation can enable middle-income countries and emerging economies to play a more active role on the international stage in support of, acti of activities to achieve sustainable development goals. As expressed in DG, uh, SDG 17, South-South cooperation is vital to strengthen implementation, revitalize global partnerships, and help countries take collective steps to sustainable and resilient development that leaves no one behind. At the same time, and as we have confirmed here over the past day and a half, volunteers provide vital support to achieving the SDGs by building local ownerships, measuring progress, providing technical expertise, raising awareness, and aspiring behavioral change. Secondly, the core values of both volunteerism and South-South cooperation align perfectly. South-South cooperation is based on the collective self-reliance of developing countries and focus on solidarity and win-win cooperation. The principles of respect, reciprocity, and mutual benefit can equally apply to international volunteering. If it is done well though, not only does international volunteering bring benefits to the recipient community and uh, sorry, international volunteering not only brings benefit to the recipient community, but also to the individual volunteer. Crucial, once the volunteer returns, it can also bring benefits such as knowledge, skills, 
and experience to the sender community. Thirdly, volunteering provides a channel for South-South cooperation to go beyond hard investment. Volunteering is about people-to-people -people interaction, and it is crucial to realizing the potential of holistic South-South cooperation. Volunteer exchanges promote understanding and solidarity. They foster a sense of common good and create global citizens. The value of this may be more difficult to quantify than building a road or exchanging technology, but it is hugely important in a world that has become ever more interdependent. Finally, across the, development, the developing world, volunteering is becoming more mainstream, better organized and better governed. In many countries, it is already an established modality to address domestic development challenges. It is also becoming part of the expanding overseas development cooperation of middle-income countries. Countries such as Argentina, with the White Helmets organization, regional organizations like ECOWAS, with its youth volunteer program, already have deep experience and technical expertise that is well suited to sharing with other countries. I'm really sorry that the White Helmets are not here. Uh, they unfortunately could not make it last minute because of things happening in Argentina itself. Uh, they want to underline, they really would have wanted to be here with me because they did have a really good discussion with everybody in Beijing and they wanted to continue on that, as you well know. UNV stands ready to support the continuation of the discussion. Last year, 82% of UN volunteers and over 6,700 online volunteers came from the Global South, providing a significant South-South channel for knowledge and skills transfer. Through the contrib contributions of its volunteers, UNV has worked with governments, UN agencies, regional organizations and local communities to enhance capacities such as health, education, disaster risk reduction and youth development. We are proud of this track record and we want to do more. We want to work with more developing countries to guide their own volunteering organizations along the path of working locally to cooperate internationally. We want to jointly implement more trilateral projects with middle income countries to establish innovation, innovative new partnerships and facilitate the sharing of complementary skills and best practices. And we want to work together on the new aspects of volunteering that are opening up, such as reciprocal volunteering, corporate volunteering, and online volunteering. Dialogues and sharing are an important first step, and UNV is committed to support this process. Exactly one year ago to this day, I left Beijing with a broad smile on my face, following the successful conclusion of the Conference on International Middle Income Country Volunteering. Some of you here today were also at that conference. The conference was co-hosted with BVF and CVF and was attended by a range of stakeholders that came from 18 UN member states on five continents. Participants at the Beijing conference reflected on past experience, identifying challenges, but expressing hope and anticipation of future cooperation. They asked for more opportunities for knowledge transfer and called on UNV to support this. They raised many points that can provide guidelines for future discussions. These include that South-South volunteering must be linked with national development goals, that international programs need to ensure that the right people are selected, but also that everyone can have the opportunity to be selected, and that there, are, that, and that there needs to be political space for civil society and a strong legal framework to protect the volunteers. When I gave the closing speech at Beijing conference, I remarked that volunteering, that the volunteering future we should aim for is not just north-south, but south-south and south-north. One year on, I believe that this aspiration is just as desirable, but even more achievable due to the progress that has been made over the past months. Progress, such as the new UNV BVF project, which we, ha which we are very pleased to launch today with the side event in South-South Cooperation. This new project, through supporting Chinese volunteering organizations to engage in international cooperation, 
will help to strengthen and diversify China's strong commitment to South-South cooperation. It will support a participatory approach to development along China's flagship development strategy, the Belt and Road Initiative, and create opportunities for new partnerships with stronger Chinese engagement within the UN system. These outcomes will unlock untapped innovation, knowledge and resources while demonstrating the powerful combination of volunteering and South-South cooperation to drive sustainable development. I wish the project every, success, every, every possible success and look forward to seeing Chinese volunteers in the next Global Partnership Forum in the next Blue Room Talks to tell us about their experiences. Finally, I would like to thank again our partners BVF and CVF for co-hosting this event and thank you all for taking the time to be here. I sincerely hope that over the next couple of hours we can have a rich and open discussion that can further development of a strategic agenda around South-South cooperation and volunteering that is based on your needs, on your vision and your aspiration. Thank you. Thank you very much, Richard, for your statement. And congratulations on launching this new phase of partnership and collaboration with BVF. We'll be very excited to hear more about it. I now have a great pleasure to welcome and introduce our three key speakers for this session. And I would also invite them to uh, sit here on the podium. We have uh, Mr. Ying Wang, Deputy Secretary General, Beijing Volunteer Service Federation. You may take your seat. We have Honorable Minister Osman Hansils, Deputy Minister from Sierra Leone. Welcome, Honorable Deputy Minister. And we have Mr. Paisan Rupanichkit, Deputy Director General, Thai Cooperation Agency. Welcome on the podium. I would like to start by introducing, and please take Take your seats. I would like to start by introducing our first speaker, Beijing Volunteer Service Federation. Mr. Ying is the Deputy Secretary General. Created in 1993, BVF is a non-profit organization which unites volunteer service organizations in China. Its main functions include capacity building support, research, policy formulation, and volunteer exchanges in Beijing. Mr. Ying has been with BVF for the last three years. He holds a degree, doctoral degree in law from Tsinghua University. Welcome. Uh, we look forward, please, to your remarks. Respected Mr. Richard Dictus. Respected Ms. Zhao Jinfang, respected global partners, it's my pleasure to share the experience of volunteer service in Beijing on behalf of BVF. First, I would like to thank Mr. Dictus, Ms. Zhao, UNV, and CNV, uh, CVF, for your continued support and assistance for the development of volunteer service in Beijing. I would also like to thank all the partners for attending today's side event to discuss how to promote sustainable development through volunteerism and South-South cooperation. Compared with many cities in development countries, volunteer service in Beijing has a relatively so short history, yet it has undergone a rapid development in less than 40 years. In particular, with less than 10 years after Beijing successfully held the 2008 Olympic Games, the number of volunteers in Beijing rose from 1.5 million to 3.6 million, and the number of volunteer organizations from less than 10,000 to 59,000. More importantly, Volunteerism has played an indispensable role in promoting sus 
sustainable development and the improving capacity of delivering social service. For example, there are over 350 elderly care centers and 400 community service centers for the disabled in Beijing. Our volunteers provide routine services to these centers. In Beijing, there are also over 110 private schools for the children of rural migrant workers. Volunteers from universities teach the children music, painting, English, and computer courses every Thursday afternoon. Beijing faces serious challenges in air and water pollution. Many volunteers take actions to promote concepts of green mobility, clean up garbage in rivers, and help environment protection agencies to monitor and deter behaviors causing environmental pollution. In terms of poverty alleviation, BVF has also sent professional volunteers to remote uh, villages to teach local farmers how to raise chickens, plant fruit trees, and grow mushrooms. Every year, we also send medical experts uh, volunteers to Xinjiang, Tibet, and other Western regions to train local doctors and provide free treatment to local farmers. In short, BVF has strived to incorporate volunteer service into every aspect of, of SDGs in Beijing. There are many reasons why we have made the progress. In summary, we believe the four key reasons are as follow. Firstly, we center on sustainable development as our target to promote volunteer service. We believe volunteer service should be human oriented so as to contribute to the comprehensive development of human beings and society. Therefore, following the 2008 Olympics, we have tried to achieve strategic transformation in volunteer service, from serving the games to promoting sustainable development and public service. Volunteers in Beijing have carried out many highly effective activities in areas such as environmental protection, elderly care, assisting uh, the disabled, and uh, poverty alleviation, which in turn has enhanced the public recognition of volunteer service. Secondly, we try to win policy support for volunteering from the government. In a developing country like China, volunteerism on an individual basis cannot meet the need of social development in a timely manner. As such, promote, promotion of volunteerism by government is required. Beijing issued local regulations in 2007 to clar clarify government's responsibilities on promoting volunteer service and the developing prefer preferential policies on employment and ag education opportunities for volunteers. From 2014 onward, we began to purchase insurance for all volunteers in Beijing. At present, Beijing invests over 30 million RMB, about 4.5 million US dollars annually in volunteers through BVF. Thirdly, We encourage our people to take part in volunteer service through uh, social mobilization. Active public pa participation is the fundamental driving force for the development of volunteer service. In the last few years, BVF has been actively promoting volunteerism to the public through publishing books, broadcasting advertisements, and uh, organizing workshops. Regarding social mobilization, in our early years, we mainly focused on college, college students. In the last few years, we have, uh, yeah, yeah. And now, 
we have put more attention on ordinary communities, professionals, and the private enterprise. 2015, we launched the Volunteer Family Plan to promote family-based volunteer service mode, which has attracted more residents to provide volunteer service. Fourthly, we try to learn best practices and experiences through international exchange. Our development is closely related to UNV's support. In 2007, we began to establish a close relationship with UNV, and since then, we have implemented, implemented two phases of collaboration projects. The same of the first project, which ran from 2007 to 2011, was strengthening volunteerism for development through the 2008 Beijing Olympic Games. The same of the phase two project, which ran from 2012 to 2015, was strengthening volunteer service development through civic participation and the regional and international cooperation. Beijing was the biggest beneficiary of these two projects. Through such cooperation, we deepened our understanding of the re relationship between volunteer service and the sustainable development, trained a large group of volunteer leaders, learned advanced experience and practice from other countries, and strengthened the exchange with volunteer organizations in, in other countries and regions. These achievements are of great significance to the long-term development of volunteer service in Beijing. In October 2015, S1 Phase 2 project was coming at end. BVF and UNV held the first international volunteer service e exchange conference in Beijing. Representatives from 18 UN member states and many international organizations attended the conference. One important achievement of the conference was that everyone recognized that because many middle-income countries have a similar need for social or economic development, their experience and practice in promoting volunteerism are of more val value in mutual sharing. Therefore, South-South cooperation in the field of international volunteer service has great potential in enabling MICs to achieve the SDGs. As a response to the SDGs adopted by UN and to the Belt and Road Initiative proposed by, Ch by the Chinese government, BVF and UNV signed a cooperative agreement on phase three of the project with the theme strengthening China's involvement in the development of international volunteer service through South-South cooperation and the Belt and the Road Initiative. Today's side event signi signifies the official beginning of this new project. Compared with the previous two phases, phase three places more emphasis on cooperation and exchange with other developing countries or MICs. We will carry out the following work in promoting South-South cooperation through international volunteerism. First, we will promote knowledge and experience sharing among South countries. We can share experience and lessons on promoting volunteerism through people exchange seminar, training, joint research, and establishing the Belt and Road City Volunteer Service Alliance. Secondly, we shall strengthen and improve the mutual, uh, multilateral international cooperative mechanism for vo volunteerism. Beijing is more than willing to hold the next International Volunteer Service Exchange Conference with UNV in 2017. We hope this com conference will become an important platform for South-South cooperation through international volunteerism. Thirdly, 
we will explore the possibility of setting up some international volunteer service projects. Through UNV, we will send volunteers to UNV and other developing countries to provide volunteer services. We will also explore implementing pilot cooperative projects with, over, with other organizations in the Belt and Road countries. Meanwhile, the phase three of the project has received a tremendous support from CVF and the Ministry of Commerce of China. Chinese President Xi Jinping announced that China will, will set up South-South Cooperation Assistance Fund to support developing countries to implement the post-2015 development uh, agenda when he attended UN Development Summit in September 2015. As an extension of the Phase 3 cooperation, we will also actively apply for the new projects to be supported by the fund. All in all, BVF is a, is a firm supporter, participant, and a facilitator of UNV's initiative on South-South cooperation. Coordinated by UNV, we are willing to join hands with everyone to contribute to the promotion of international cooperation in volunteerism and the realization of SDGs. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ying, for your presentation. It was very interesting and heartening to see how in Beijing volunteers are addressing all kinds of environmental and social challenges and the way that BVF is integrating volunteer services in all aspects of SDGs. I would now like to move to our next speaker, and this is Honorable Osman Hansils, Deputy Minister, Ministry of Energy, Sierra Leone. I will give a short introduction, if, if you allow me, and you may uh, speak from, from your seat as well. Um, Mr. Hans Sills has served in the government of Sierra Leone since 2009 in a number of important ministries, such as Minister, uh, Deputy Minister of Transport and Aviation, Education, Science and Technology. He was instrumental in implementing the ECOVAS volunteer program that was also presented earlier in the forum, and he currently serves as Deputy Minister of Energy. Honorable Mr. Hansils holds master's degree in rural development from Nyala University in Sierra Leone and several certificates, including the recent one in change management from Royal Institute of Public Affairs UK. And Mr. Hansils particularly mentioned that he loves to mentor youth. We look forward to hear your, your statement, Honorable Mr. Hansils. Well, I think you're going to allow me to come and stand as well. As you prefer. <laughs> Good afternoon. After that and a wonderful introduction, I hope I will do my best to live up to it all. Uh, my own presentation is not going to be in, uh, in, uh, on the uh, slides. And, uh, and uh, I take it that I'm here to also speak on the recently ended and uh, ECOWAS volunteer program, which and, uh, obviously we went into partnership with the UNV in 2006 to implement. The entire concept of bringing together or, for, or implementing a, part, and, uh, a volunteer program in ECOWAS started in 2004 when the heads of states met and agreed and, uh, to the concept of having a UN volunteer, sorry, an ECOWAS volunteer program along the lines of established and the ones like the UNV, like the British and the Voluntary Service Organization and the Peace Corps of America. So in 2005, the ECOWAS region entered into an agreement with the African Development Bank to provide the funding for implementation of this and the concept. And in 2006, we also entered into an agreement with the UNV to give us the backup support that we need with their, I mean, with their wealth of experience in the fields to move the sector forward. It took another couple of years before the, uh, the commencement of the 
and a project of the ECOWAS volunteer program. It started off in Liberia in 2010 when the president of the commission went to Moravia to launch the uh, first pilot phase. Sorry, I must mention that uh, it was agreed that this ECOWAS volunteer program should be piloted in four countries in the sub-region, essentially Sierra Leone, Liberia, Guinea-Bissau, and Guinea-Conakry. It ended up being piloted in just three of those countries, and uh, with the exception of uh, uh, Guinea-Bissau, because of political instability then going on in Guinea-Bissau. So the program was implemented, I mean, was uh, 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 piloted in Sierra Leone, Liberia, and, uh, and Guinea-Conakry. As I've said, it started off in 2010 in Liberia with the launch of the first pilot phase. Then it took another three years for us to also set off ours into motion in Sierra Leone in 2013, in April and uh, April, May of 2013, and then Guinea followed steps. Now, uh, all in all, in this pilot phase, uh, uh, about 97 volunteers were out there in the field giving their services in these three and a pilot phases, and they were made up of about 12 nationalities. So you could see the whole element of trying to, because now and, uh, this is all being done in line with ECOWAS 2020 and, uh, and a vision. And that vision is intended to make ECOWAS, like I believe even the, the United Nations and similar bodies, to move away from institutions or bodies of political heads and institutions to go into where it really matters. People, people make things move and people are the real movers and shakers in our global village. So the, the rationale of the ECOWAS 2020 and a vision and the focus and drive, and the focus and drive of it is to uh, make ECOWAS into a people-centered uh, organization move it away from heads of states, move it away from heads of government, move it away from uh, political institutions and go to where it matters. So with that, uh, with that uh, 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 vision, they gave, as I have said, clearance for the start off of this pilot phase, which, uh, you know, as I have just said again, involved about 12 nationalities drawn from the sub-region, and in total about 97 of them. The program of itself ended up formally and officially just last month at the end of uh, September. And I can say here that certainly it has been a, uh, I mean an unprecedented uh, success. Because speaking even from, uh, from the viewpoint of Sierra Leone, what happened in Sierra Leone is that the program was well received, the volunteers were as you would expect, well motivated. They set out not only to deliver on the core skills which they were supposed to deliver on, which is in French, in the teaching of French and sciences, because those are the two areas which we in Sierra Leone, when, when we, we, we are selected to be involved in the pilot phase, we obviously made it a point that those are the two areas where we obviously felt in, uh, in dire needs in the educational sector, and then of course in the health sector. Now, the program started, but uh, unfortunately actually a couple of months down the line, as you, I mean as most of you would uh, know, and uh, we fell into the serious problem of having to fight with the Ebola virus di disease, a real insidious killer, worse than uh, the clash of arms and violence. Ebola was so scary that for all of us who lived in that country and, uh, throughout that process, uh, it was a daily, daily living in death. Because imagine a family where your children do go out, you have your house staff, you have your maids, you have your cooks, everybody moves in and out of the house, but then you're all exposed to that insidious virus. I mean, so whenever anybody moves out or moves in, you all begin to get scary. And imagine a situation where if any one of you should fall into the disease, especially, I mean, your children. Tell me, uh, I mean, of us would see our children really sick and in some serious uh, situation and not having the courage to go and give assistance. But yet still, that assistance could be your death sentence. And it could, and certainly in the process of fighting Ebola, it certainly decimated, it certainly killed several entire families. Everybody was killed in the family. So that was the nature of, of the Ebola, the, the virus. So when it happened that way, the program which has just started in, in April, May, by June, the volunteers were certainly getting scary. 
and the real put us under pressure well, uh, to withdraw them. And so they were withdrawn in June of 2014. But uh, the, especially those in the educational uh, sector, they certainly came back. I mean, those in the health sector, perhaps being aware of the, you know, of the nature of the disease, they were not really so courageous to come back, although we were able to get some other volunteers to, uh, I mean, to help us and uh, fight, the, fight the Ebola and, uh, and the disease. Now, in the educational sector, initially when the program started, there were 21 of them. 17 of them were to teach French, and the four that were to teach uh, science. But as of the end of the program, five had withdrawn for various many reasons, which uh, could be the challenges that our commercial and uh, people are going to learn to obviously do lessons learned from the, from, from the EVP program. In any case, as I have said, because of the way they involved themselves in the communities, because of the way they not only gave the lessons that, we, that they were there to, uh, to give, the community is missing them. I have ample proof of that, right? So much so that uh, so many of them, at least about three or four of them, have indicated to me, and I'm currently assisting them to try to see how we can get them to stay on in the country to give because they themselves, and this is the nature of volunteerism, right? Because as we have just, I mean, you know, you know as we've been hearing, they themselves can, have, uh, can at times fall in love with their locations. And given, I think, in uh, Javier, our Brazilian and uh, volunteer, you could see it's obviously uh, going to the next step, right? You know, so that is the nature of volunteerism. So I can obviously say here yeah, that uh, uh, at least about four of those and uh, uh, of those in uh, 16 who ended up the program have indicated to me and I'm assisting them to try to give them, and, uh, I mean to try to help them secure jobs back home in Sierra Leone. That is the extent of which and, uh, the program was a success. It also, they were also involved in the communities, setting up French clubs and uh, uh, there was one from, an, uh, Mar uh, from an, uh, Burkina Faso, Abdullahi Sawadugu. Even when he saw, he put it out in the report to me that one morning he sat out there and saw, an, uh, I mean, the damaged home of a widow. And so he immediately, offers, uh, I mean, obviously, as we expect of these young people, he was motivated, he was, he was certainly captivated by what he saw. And he set out to launch uh, a fundraising to try to uh, get the woman back her house because her house was damaged by storms, you know, overnight. And although he did not quite realize his ambition, his goal, because I think when he spoke to the woman initially, she said to him it was about 800,000 euros. I don't know how to translate that into dollar or to euro, but just, just look at the figure. But uh, eventually it ended up, and according to when he set out to really assist the woman and went on to do some uh, cost estimates, the, I mean, he was able to find out actually that that was far below what was in, uh, in required to get her back at home. It was about four times that amount. It was about 3.5 million in Leons. Now, so because of the short time, because by that time, the program itself was coming to an end. So in uh, Sawadugu, I would call him chief. Sawadugu was, uh, was only able to raise about 800,000 Leons. Now, going forward, and uh, if I can also add up to this one, that uh, the way I would uh, in particular actually want to encourage our commercial and uh, people going forward to try to implement a similar program is uh, somebody did introduce me to say that uh, I was involved in the WhatsApp social media group with them. Yes, of course I did. And then I think as I said at yesterday's uh, engagement out here, I did say that it's just a manifestation of my attitude to life. It's the reason why I asked her to particularly in, uh, in indicate that I simply like to mentor youths. I'm not a youth any longer. I'm just past 60 years. <laughs> you know, but in any case, actually, uh, I joined them in their social media group, and it was an all-embracing. And luckily, when I went out to the breakout, and uh, sorry, another session this afternoon on the private sector involvement, I heard them talk about volunteer ambassadors. These are our volunteers. We are so innovative that the title of the WhatsApp page in which I was with them was called Peace Ambassadors because the essential drive of the ECOWAS volunteer and the program is to use the program as a means of promoting peace and development in the subregion. As most of you here would know, at a point in time in the recent past, the subregion was obviously in, I mean, I mean, was certainly a war-torn war and a region. 
with war starting in Morocco, I mean in Liberia, coming on to Sierra Leone, the, I mean the most nauseous wars ever. Imagine situations where the rebels would begin to wager, wager on a pregnant woman, whether the baby she was carrying was male or female, and they would wager, and then they would say, okay, let us and, and prove it. And they would split that woman's belly, right, to just prove a case. They would take boiling, I mean, they would take babies and put them in boiling oil, hot boiling oil. So I don't think that in a, in a such wars have been fought in many places, actually, in the, I mean, come on, even in the, even in the distant and the past. So that was the situation, that is the situation from which we are coming up in the, from in the, in the ECOWAS region, which is the reason why this ECOWAS volunteer program is rooted in the peace and development wing of the, of the, of the, of the commission. Right now, but again, as I think I, I tried to say yesterday again, it's interesting to hear that when we, when we talk about peace, as far as I'm concerned, there are various meanings of peace. But I believe that the most important and uh, meaning that we normally adopt in such uh, a fora, in such an uh, uh, gatherings, is the one to do with the absence of war, violence, and the absence of clash of arms. No, okay, yes, that you could say is the fundamental basis. But obviously peace, and the peace I believe that we should be focusing on is that that addresses, uh, the, I mean, uh, reduction mental stress and trying to bring harmony among people. Because it is only when you have harmony among pe people who are freed from mental stress that you can really start talking about development. Which brings me to my next favorite topic. That is, what do we do going forward with this program? Now, as I also tried to do yesterday, I did say that in my past, I had been engaging with, uh, with volunteers from the Peace Corps and the uh, VSOs, the Voluntary Services and uh, I mean Organization of Volunteers from, uh, from the UK. And when I was principal of the Bond Technical Training College a couple of years ago, just before I came into government, I did say that those volunteers from the VSOs who came in to teach in our community marine engineering, electronics and, ele and electrical engineering, carpentry, they certainly set up that college in such a way that we became the envy in the nation because it was from among our students from the college who went to the, to the University of Sierra Leone who were, able, who, who were able to graduate within three years with their master's degree. You know, I mean, that was exceptional. It had never happened before. How, why and how did it happen? Because we were lucky to have the, the, the services of these VSOs who helped us to set very, very sound in the syllabuses and curriculum that enable us to achieve that in a unique in the achievement in the country. Now, so therefore, my point here is, if the UK and the VSOs, or VSOs from the UK, if they could leave the UK and come to bond in Sierra Leone, not only in Sierra, I mean in Sierra Leone, but Bont is about 90 nautical miles south of uh, Sierra Leone or south of the capital Freetown. Now, if they could come all that way, I mean with their skills in marine engineering, carpentry, and, uh, and then uh, marine engineering, carpentry, and, uh, and electronic. Now, what is stopping us in the sub-region? And that is the appeal I want to end up to make on behalf of ECOWAS. Honestly, Mr. To, who normally would go on these uh, evaluation tours, would have, I mean, would obviously attest to the fact that I'm always appealing to them that going forward with this program, please let's obviously try to introduce elements of technical skills training. Now, uh, look at a quotation I have just I, I got here this afternoon, and that will form part of my key message: that in uh, skilling people through relevant uh, and good quality technical vocational educa educational training is seen as a factor that can really make a difference in the global youth employment crisis, and that is a crisis indeed. The crisis where the youths of the world today constitute about two-thirds of the uh, working population, but yet still they constitute 40% of the unemployed in the working population. That is no way to go. Until and unless we address such uh, a structural and uh, a problem, we are talking about losing productivity and serious business risks. And if the business people don't obviously make profits that can cascade down to the people on the ground in the, I mean, in various countries in the world, then we are going to continue to have the situation. Somebody was saying that to me this afternoon, where you have a 
people, oh, sorry, it was, I mean, it was Daniel Richard himself who said that a couple of minutes ago out here. People walking from Gabon, walking across the Sahara, the, the, the desert, crossing the Atlantic, what for? To seek greener pastures. So why can't we try to make sure that we provide these greener pastures back home? So my appeal here, I was happy to hear just now in this, I mean, in the, in this, in the private and the sector and this session, and it's something I never knew before, that we can also get the private sector to give part of the employees to come out as volunteers. But I am really looking at them, obviously using part of their funds to help fund these activities, to help really engage, not only in terms of, because that is their bottom line. Their bottom line actually is that they need customers. They need people to produce and to buy. So why can't they, for example, in the West Africa subdivision, why can't they be more forthcoming in terms of helping us to achieve the peace which we need, which will prevent our people from having to cross the desert, cross the Atlantic, cross the, the Mediterranean and the like to come to see green, uh, greener pastures. So my appeal here, finally, finally, actually, is to make the point that please, let's try not to lose sight of making sure that going forward, right, we should have volunteers who are skilled in, uh, in these and in the hardcore technical skills. Right, that can help us make the difference in terms of en enhancing productivity of our economies. So I think let me stop and wait for the questions that, that will follow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Mr. Hansils. I think you've really given us some uh, reality check on war and peace. And when you said, what is stopping us in the sub-region to, to really reach out to areas that need to be reached with some hardcore technical skills? How do we address youth unemployment? What we have with the ECOWAS volunteer program with a track record of 12 years is a solid regional volunteer infrastructure that actually delivers for health and education and it's based on solidarity of 12 different nationalities in Africa. When I joined UNV and I had the pleasure of joining Robert Toy, uh, and he told me about the COVAS program, I immediately said, this is probably one of the best models we have at UNV for such a program. Can we replicate, can we encourage and build more partnerships around these programs based on true South-South cooperation principles? I would like to now go to our Next speaker, um, representing Thailand International Cooperation Agency, Mr. Rupanichkit. Taika, established in 2004, is a focal agency under the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Thailand with the objective to implement development cooperation programs, which also include volunteer programs with a number of neighboring countries and very solid development track record. Mr. Rupanichkid has been in diplomatic service since 1989, working on ASEAN and economic affairs. He's been posted in Turkey and in New York, very experienced in uh, UN um, business. And Mr. Rupanichkid holds PhD in economics from the Australian National University. A very warm welcome. We look forward to hearing from you, Mr. Rupanichkid. Thank you, Madam Moderator, for your uh, kind introduction. And I actually, I prepared a PowerPoint, but I was told that I have uh, less than 10 minutes. So I decided not to use my PowerPoint because uh, I'm not very good in PowerPoint presentations. <laughs> Often my presentation end up just a point without power. So <laughs> I think I, I do it without it. So I will do it less than 10 minutes. First of all, I have to thank uh, you and me for uh, the kind invitation extend to my agency. Uh, as, I, as you know, uh, my agency is a, a young organization established. Uh, actually, we are formally established with a department status under the Foreign Ministry of Thailand last year. But we have existed for, year, for, for a number of years since the uh, 1960, but with the different uh, roles and responsibility. Uh, as you know, Thailand is the a middle-income developing country. But being a, a, a middle-income developing country doesn't prevent us 
from being uh, taking up a role as the development partners. Uh, even though we are trapped in the, the so-called middle income trap for, for years, but that also does not prevent us from becoming a development partners. And we are quite fortunate that we have been uh, working with uh, a number of uh, development partners in many developing countries through a bilateral South-South cooperation and also through a trilateral North-South-South cooperation. And we are fortunate to have a, a very active uh, development partner such as JICA, a Japan International Cooperation Agency. And we have uh, quite a number of projects uh, in Asia and in Africa. And the, the, the establishment of uh, Thailand International Cooperation Agency just confirmed the, our determination and aspiration to be a development partner. And in Thailand, we have our homegrown approach to sustainable development. Uh, you, some of you, if you follow up the Thailand economic development, some of you may, may be recorded during the, the mid 1980s to the mid 1990s. Uh, Thailand was the fastest growing economy in the world. Somebody said that Thailand will become the next uh, economic uh, tiger. But at the time, the our uh, His Majesty the King, who just passed away uh, yesterday, uh, called for a moderation, reasonableness, and prudent, because he believed that the, the speed of development that we were experiencing at the time during the 1980 and 1990 were not sustainable. Uh, for him, uh, the ultimate goal of being, uh, the ultimate goal of dev economic development is not to become an economic tiger, but to have a sustainable development. And he introduced a new concept of development, which, which is focused on a middle part, which is based on moderation, uh, reasonableness, and prudence. It is about transforming economy of exploitation to the economy of moderation and reasonableness. And, but it was very unfortunate that during the, the boom time, the booming time, uh, nobody listened, very few people listened to the king, you know, because it's understandable because when you can make a lot of money during the boom time, it's difficult to, to convince anyone to be mo moderate, you know, in consumption, in production. But then in 1997, the, the economic bubble went bust and we experienced the, econ uh, the financial crisis. We call it Tom, Tom Yam Kung crisis. And it started in Thailand in July uh, 1997 and then spread to many parts of the world. Uh, some of you can recall that financial crisis. Uh, that crisis was the, the wake up call for Thailand and the Thai people to look at our economic development model. And people start to think what the king has been calling for years. And after that, we adopt the, the, econ the sufficiency economy philosophy, or we call the SAP. The SEP as our national economic policy. But actually, the, the SEP can be applied to not just economic development. It can be applied to our daily lives. It can be applied to many other sectors of the economy. This is the kind of home growth approach that we want to share with other uh, developing countries. And if you, I just want to refer to the, the statement made by Mr. Richard Dictus about the, the, the resources we have uh, on this planet. You know, with the current consumption and production, we manage about seven and a half planet Earth to sustain uh, the level of consumption and production we have now. Somebody say, we can put it another way, with one planet we have now, it may be the resources we have maybe just can sustain 1.5 million, billion, not the 7 billion we have now, and not many more billion that will be coming in the coming decade. So we, we, we have to really look at the economic model. And if all developing countries follow the, 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 the mo economic model, the uh, industrialization in the developed country, like the US and other country use when they become an industrialized country, the resources in the world will not be enough. You know, it certainly means we have to really look at the, the economic model. Yeah. So we, 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 we believe that uh, the, the, the sufficiency economy can be an alternative approach to sustainable development. 
And if you look at the 2030 agenda, the home goal net force is recognized and encouraged. And that's why we want to share uh, this uh, philosophy with other countries. And with the passing of the, the king yesterday, the SAP is the legacy that left to the Thai people to be shared with other countries. And let me move to the, the, the issue of volunteers. Uh, volunteer is one of the, the, the mandate of my agency. But we, we start to send the, the first batch of volunteer in 2003. First, we send it to a uh, neighboring country, to Vietnam, to be an assistant in teaching Thai language. And then we expand to other neighboring countries, to Laos, to Cambodia, to Myanmar. And then we start to expand the scope of uh, volunteers. Uh, we start to send volunteers to East Timor to help develop a, a community-based uh, model based on the, the sufficiency economy philosophy. And we have the, we fortunate, we have a partner like uh, German uh, GIZ had our partner to do a trilateral cooperation in East Timor. And another country that we send a volunteer is Bhutan uh, because we have a close relation between the people of the two countries and also the loyal family of the two countries. So we have sent quite a number of volunteers to Bhutan in various fields, in agriculture, in architecture, and, in, and many other fields. Uh, that's our clearly uh, six to seven countries that we have this past of volunteer. So in terms of number and scope, it's quite limited. But we, we are determined to do more. And I have, uh, I, before we break for lunch, I fortunate to meet one of the colleagues from Australia. He gave me uh, his name card. Uh, he's come from AVI. I don't know what AVI stands for. It's my guessing Australian Volunteer International. Uh, International. And he told me that don't be discreet. Just because you have sent a very limited number of volunteers to just a few countries, you can learn from us. We want to see more developing countries join you. So I told him that I will, I will pay him a visit. His uh, headquarters is in Melbourne. Uh, I, I, will, I will pay him a visit. I will take my <laughs> colleague to, to, to meet him and to learn from him. Because we, we have a lot to learn from other uh, well-established uh, agencies and also from other uh, agencies. And also we want to learn, we want to work with the uh, UNV. You know, yesterday I, I heard somebody say that Bonn is the world capital of volunteerism, right? So if Bonn is the world capital, yeah, Bangkok, which is the home of the UNV regional uh, head office, you know, can be a regional capital for volunteerism, <laughs> you know? Uh, And I, I, I look forward to work with Mr. Richard Dictus, but it's very unfortunate that he will be leaving for a new assignment. Uh, instead of Bangkok, he go to uh, Cairo, Egypt. You know, but anyway, I, I, I look forward to working with uh, his successor and his uh, strong team. Uh, uh, Madame Manong, she is very active. And we have already discussed uh, uh, quite an, uh, a, a few uh, initiatives that we can work with uh, UNV, and we, I, I believe that with close cooperation, we will actively participate. Uh, there will be Thai national in the blue room, you know, sub somewhere, uh, I'm, I'm sure, and with your assistant, Manong, uh, it, will, it will happen. That's all that I want to say at the moment, but just to summarize, the, the volunteer we have currently is, uh, we have three categories of volunteers. One is on a bilateral volunteerism, so it's subject to uh, negotiation and request from uh, our partner. And the other one is the trilateral volunteer. We have with the our partner developed uh, partner, such as GIZ and JICA. And another kind of volunteerism that we are exploring now is the joint volunteer. That means we work with other uh, devel uh, development agency, uh, jointly send a, a dispatch of volunteer to other, uh, uh, to the third country. This is the, uh, a new idea that my agency is now exploring. And we, uh, we, we now have a Koika that express the interest. Uh, I will be traveling to uh, Seoul uh, in, in November to explore this uh, idea of a joint uh, volunteer with Koika. So, madam, that's all that I want to say at this moment. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Mr. Rupanishkit. And I must say, having a lifelong association with uh, Southeast Asia, the way you have connected the Buddhist philosophy of the middle path with sustainable development and a focus on sustainable development as opposed to economic boom, I think this will remain the philosophical, the cultural heritage uh, of your um, majesty, King Kumipon Adet, and I think we will, uh, we will remember w this philosophy and approach and we will indeed embrace it in our development efforts. I've also appreciated the way you've illustrated this path um, that Thailand is taking as a middle income developing country from bilateral through trilateral, moving towards multilateral and indeed global. Um, volunteering with international learning and the kind of international learning that we can gather from, uh, from our experienced international volunteering organizations. I would now like to propose something slightly different in terms of the discussion format. Um, because South South essentially calls for different approaches. So what we would like to do to ensure that maximum number of people can indeed participate and, and give their experiences and ideas. With the help of my colleagues here in the room, uh, Manon, who's our experienced facilitator, Lauren sitting here, but also Mr. Ying, to um, help us organize in three big uh, discussion groups. So we can see the three, the, um, essentially the three areas that we would like to put together for a good half an hour at least discussion on three topics we would like to propose. So the first table that will be facilitated uh, by Mr. Zhang, Pre yes, Mr. Zhang, I'm sorry, Mr. Zhang present here, yes, um, will look into the question, what are the three main emerging development needs opportunities to leverage volunteering for South-South cooperation. Opportunities to leverage volunteering for South-South cooperation. Can we identify at least three? The table two that will be um, facilitated by my colleague Manon will discuss and identify three actions which can be done to integrate volunteering into South-South cooperation strategy. Three concrete actions that we can go back and take cooperation with UNV to integrate volunteering into South-South cooperation strategies. Finally, the third round table that will be facilitated my, by my colleague Lauren will uh, discuss how can we better integrate I'm sorry, how can we better connect and promote the shared value between national and international volunteer efforts? So it's again this topic. Once we have a strong national volunteer system, structure, service scheme, program, and it's moving to international, how can we better connect and promote our shared values? I would, yes, we, I think we're all organized to take you to the three um, round tables and I would like to invite our speakers to continue sharing your experience and um, informing and indeed answering questions in these three groups. Thank you very much.